Okay. So in this video, I'll be going over the you the teach pendant that uh, the UR5 has. Uh, like in the previous video, we stopped over at starting up the cobot. So I'll just go over the various uh, tabs and panels that you can see over here. Starting from this top left corner, so this is essentially the home page of the teach pendant that you'll usually see when you're loading a program or running a program. And uh, when a program is running, so over here, any variables that you'll be able to see, any uh, variables that you use in the running of the program, like let's say you are performing a palletizing operation. So all the various, uh, you know, number of blocks that you would have palletized, that would show up over here, for example. Or if you're doing stacking operation, the number of blocks that you've stacked, that is what would show up. And coming next so this is the program tab where you can actually program your robot to do any tasks and if you want to program your robot you can select the node from this node list which is there on the left and there are a couple that i'll show that i want to explain here first of all is the move command which is as it says uh, the move command essentially makes your robot move to a specified waypoint and there are two ways you could do that first is a joint trajectory and the second is a cartesian trajectory uh, for more details, you can search on what they mean. And as for waypoints, waypoints are essentially what positions you want your robot to move into. So I could add as many waypoints as I want based on what I want what the robot to move to. And coming to just a minute, yeah. And apart from that, you also have a wait command, which is essentially telling a robot to wait for a particular amount of time. Which so. Usually what happens is when you grip a object, it's recommended to have a set delay to allow the grip operation to complete fully before you actually move on. Uh, this is particularly in the case of pneumatic suction cups because uh, sometimes it just it takes a while for that vacuum to fully formulate properly. So that is one main reason where the wait command is used. Uh, the set command is essentially uh, something that you'd want to do to either turn a gripper on and off or in case in your workstation you want to uh, let's say activate a conveyor or maybe there's some other machine that you can turn on or off so it's for things like those essentially your digital outputs and uh, that you in your current workstation plc that you want to set uh, there's also a pop-up command which through which you can uh, send messages it's essentially like a print statement which waits for some sort of uh, interaction from the user either it's a message just informing that something has happened or it's a warning or it's a error command so based on what logic that your program has you could decide what type of uh, pop-up to give and you have comments which are essentially just you know the same way that any programming uh, any program would have comments just explaining what a particular step does or what it contains so on and so forth so you can enter a comment as you wish uh, coming to more advanced nodes uh, so a lot of just to uh, put this out there a lot of operations that you can do in a lot of programming nodes that you can see over here are very similar to basic programming syntaxes so you know setting a variable uh, assignment loops if statements and stuff like that so having a background a basic background in programming or at least knowing what the program contains and how it works will definitely help in that regard uh, so i'll just go over them anyway so you have loops which uh, so this is a very basic form uh, so you can either loop a set amount of times loop infinitely or you can loop when a certain expression that you want to put is true uh, assignment is different from set in that uh, so while set deals with an actual plc variable like let's say a gripper that you'd want to activate or deactivate uh, assignment deals with program variables specifically so like i mentioned let's say uh, palletize your palletizing so you can update in case you want to set the number of palletizing patterns that you want to make to let's say three so this command can help you set a variable to that value uh, if statement works exactly how you would expect an if statement to work in programming uh, you have a certain condition where if it turns true then the code that is in that particular if block it would get executed uh, coming to templates so these are three main templates that you'd usually use the first is seek now the, uh, the, work, the word seek is a bit 
uh, counterintuitive but it actually means the stacking and destacking operation that your cohort can do so like you can see here so this is the stacking and destacking unit so what we can do with the cohort is essentially perform a uh, stacking destacking operation which you could combine with let's say a palletizing operation now uh, a palletizing operation essentially uh, the word palletizing actually means uh, making the robot place objects in a grid so if you've probably seen uh, the way let's say any any box type uh, any manufacturing plant that uses boxes that outputs you know boxes like let's say phone cases or uh, I don't know any 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 sort of box related item so you'll find them in big crates now the way those crates are built in factories are though you know loaded in factories that is due to uh, this palletizing operation that the robots do and the third main one is force uh, control so this is specific to the UR5E you won't find this in any older versions and like I explained in the previous video the force uh, control allows you to output a certain force while still maintaining a certain waypoint trajectory so in case you want to write on a surface so you'd have your force acting downwards while in case you want to trace a square you'd have your uh, UR5 trace a square path while also outputting a force so let's say one newton downwards so this is just a basic overview of all the various nodes that you can program coming to installation now installation is essentially the base uh, variables the base uh, you know features and plane safety planes which I'll go over in a bit that essentially define the limits of what environment your robot is working in uh, starting with the most important one which is TCP or tool control point tool center point sorry and what it does is it's essentially the uh, so as if if you are familiar with robotics you might know that at the end of every robotic arm you have something called an end effector which is essentially what the robot uses to communicate with objects in the environment now apart from the end effector which is the mathematical endpoint of a robot you also have a, a tool or which is something you add on top of the end effector and that tool can change so you can either have a suction cup like you can put, see over here or you could have either a gripper or maybe some other sort of let's say a welding attachment or something like that so uh, the tool center point essentially gives you the actual tool center so in this case this flat piece over here this flat portion over here that is the tool center point the end effector is located somewhere up here so this distance is what we need to enter manually into the teach pendant so as you can see here it's 130 mm so that's 13 centimeters so the suction cup is 13 centimeters long away from the end effector and i've also entered uh, other tcps as well for the gripper as well as a marker uh, coming to io setup so this is essentially there's not much to do here it's most of the time the installation or this is mostly defined during installation itself and it's just uh, the number of uh, inputs and outputs that you've defined through the PLC that's attached to your robot. In our case, we just have one that we need to concern ourselves with, which is a gripper control. Uh, yeah, so the gripper control is essentially activating and deactivating the gripper. Uh, another, so that's just a general uh, overview of all the general installation parameters. Another one that I'll want to show here is uh, the home position. Now. Uh, home position is essentially the default configuration that every robot would want to start and think of it as a, a you know a zero origin position from where you would want to start your operations this do not mistake this with the actual true you know zero origin position this is just you know a default configuration from which you would want every program to start similarly to how you would you know get on your knees before a race something like that and Coming to safety, so this is uh, a very important sector uh, specific to the cobot because no other uh, cobot, no other industrial robotic arm will have this section. Only this is something that's specific to cobots, the safety component. Uh, although it is there, but in a very limited manner. Uh, and starting with robot limits, which as you can see here, we can set limits on the amount of power, the stopping time, distance, uh, elbow. So the elbow is essentially uh, that portion over there, and you can essentially set limits on how hard you want your robot to go uh, similar with joint limits similarly with joint limits you have your uh, 
all the limits that you can put on the robot in case you want to restrict any movement uh, in our case you don't really need that uh, coming to planes now planes are something that we've used uh, as i have used over here specifically to provide safety to uh, this entire workspace environment so as you can see here each plane has its own you know orientation so safe front is well at the front uh, the handle side is this area over here uh, I've also set a safe panel, which is essentially that portion. So what I've done over here is I've defined planes stating uh, the you know, extents of where the robot can reasonably move. So once it passes, let's say this level, so this is a safe table, the plane. So once it passes that plane, uh, the robot will essentially slow down. So it won't go at its full speed anymore. Similarly, if uh, in case uh, it tries to cross safe handle side or safe front it will stop because i've set those planes to be a hard limit for uh, safety purposes obviously uh, similarly for tool position uh, so this little orange uh, sphere that you can see here it's uh, it factors into the safety aspect so that uh, so this sphere essentially de depicts the amount of uh, space that the end is kind of taking so uh, from from a programming perspective the software only knows that there's a tcp at a particular point but it does not know how much area is being you know how much volume rather my bad uh, the volume that is being taken up between the tcp and this thing uh, and the end effector which could you know harm another person so that is what i've had to put in here uh, even for tool direction uh, this is also a safety feature to prevent uh, you know dangerous attachments from poking upwards uh, in case you let's say have a human operator you wouldn't want the gripper to poke up into his face in case the robot makes some sudden movement so this is a restriction on how much you can tilt the gripper in this case it can only in case let's say we start up from here it can only move up till this position it can't go further than that because that is the limit that we've set so uh, in the case of the suction cup if if i try to make the suction cup tilt past this point then it'll give me an error it'll say you know protective stop and something like that and so features are another uh, extension of this installation environment so safety uh, planes that i just described right now they are based off of features and to explain what a feature is let's say you are uh, working with sheet metal like your robot is let's say welding sheet metal for example now uh, on a repetitive work work line you'd always have, uh, you know, the same feature appear on a, again and again, uh, you know, the same piece of sheet metal appear again and again. And uh, to make life easier for the programmer, you can define a local or a local coordinate system for that sheet metal. So it's very similar to how a CNC would work, where you would have a global coordinate system and you have the workpiece coordinate system. So think of something like that. But this can extend to any sort of feature that you want. It could be a plane. Uh, like let's say I want uh, my origin for this series of holes that I'd want to make I'd want it to be here so I could do that here uh, in case of that uh, inclined plate uh, you know face over there I could set that I could set that uh, metal part over there as a feature so I could do uh, anything that I want and uh, this second is I have a point and line in a plane so that is simple enough uh, coming to the IO variables that I have over here uh, the only thing that we deal with over here right now is just gripper control. So as you can see here, this is an active uh, high, low. So right now it's on, which means it's off. Uh, so if I turn this off, so you can hear the pneumatic gripper turn on. So that means it's on. And once I set this to high in the control panel, in the teach button, then the gripper turns off. So it's kind of a not... Uh, sort of thing and uh, this is uh, what we use mainly to uh, jog the robot now jogging is essentially when you're not uh, using the robot to, uh, as part of a program it's not moving under the effects of a program and you want to manually move the robot that is when you can uh, do it now uh, you can also there's something called a C drive so what I can do is using uh, free drive mode I don't need to use uh, the usual controls that I'd want to use to move 
let's say as you can see here so you can see it moving there now this is the usual method for jogging robots now one advantage of cobots is that i can use something called free drive and using free drive what i can do is uh, it's something that i have to hold uh, down so i can't really show you right now but uh, if if with uh, with free drive what i can do is um i can press so another feature that i haven't told you is this thing on the top so so moment so this black button that you can see here this is also another switch or button of sorts to enable free drive mode and what it does what the advantage of free drive mode is uh, i can use my hand so i can use my hand and essentially move this end effector to wherever i want it to be without having to deal with the hassle of using buttons to control the uh, to jog the robot essentially uh, so that is one very good uh, advantage that cobots have over uh, your usual industrial robots because of the fact that i could just you know literally pull the robot to where i want it to be without dealing with the uh, the hassles of you know doing buttons and anything like that so this is the, so again you have logs which as you can see just logs the current state of the robot what joint angles it has right now and in case there are any crash reports that i have over here then you can download the same as a support file so this is a general overview of the teach pendant in the next video i'll go over some basic operations that you can do with the cobot